Praise the Lord. Grab your mic. Wow. That was a first. Thank you. Asante Sana. Thank you. You got her on? All right, hold her close. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Buona Asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Buona Asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Buona Asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time, God is good. Wow, it is great to be back here. Thank you, Pastor Chuck. It is a great pleasure to meet you. Thank you, congregation, for your prayers and faithful support. Amen. Precept upon precept, year upon year upon year, almost since 1981. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So you've already figured out we're not spring chickens. In fact, next Sunday, next Sunday is my wife's birthday, and she is... Next, Plenty nine and holding. <laughs> next Sunday is my husband's birthday. Oh, I won't even tell on him. How that's he is. right. <laughs> Can you believe we have the same birthdays? The same. So we are we're extremely excited for the for the goodness of God, and like Moses, as he grew in age, he grew in maturity and in strength, and we find the Lord renewing our strength day by day, and we are encouraged to go forward with more to do for Jesus, even than what we have done, and he has helped us to do in the past. So we're looking forward to greater things. Amen. Amen. Trudy is going to share with you for, for the upfront here. We are a team. We're a dual team. We, we work together. We've worked together since before. We were married doing an invade in her hometown, door to door. Every door in that town of Sheldon, Iowa was knocked on by a team of four people inviting them to know Jesus Christ. And uh, so we've done that in three towns here in Iowa. Uh, and that is in the past, but now God has called us to Africa. And so we are on a mission, his mission, but we're under commission. Co is the cooperative word. Together. We can't do it. He can, but together we can. So it takes, it takes the team. You're part of the team, so we thank you. Thank you very much. So listen to Trudy as she shares. I build tabernacles. She builds pastors. And I'm also pressing on. And we'll talk about that also later in the service. Bless you, dear. I want to tell you, I had a wonderful time with Children's Church this morning. And, um, you know, those are very important people to be hearing about missions. So it was wonderful. Amen. You know, sometimes in missions, there are situations that seem so difficult that they seem nearly impossible for a time. And I'd like to share that one of those stories, okay? You can tell when you have this age, we have more than one story. <laughs> when we arrived in Tanzania in 1982, it was shocking that we could not find one pastor who believed that a child could accept the Lord as Savior. So, children were only in the church during the singing time, and then they were sent outside to play and there was no separate ministry in any church for children. So there was no Sunday school, no children's church, nothing like that. And because of the poverty, they said, well, we can't invest in children anyway. And so they decided that 15 was the earliest age that they would begin to minister to youth, should we say then? And so I began to, to work hard to change the pastor's beliefs about children and to ask for the opportunity, can I teach some people in your church how to do children's ministry. And I'm going to tell you, it was a very hard row to hoe, if you know what I mean. And so Ken and I developed a gazette, we kind of called it that, that went out to every single church twice a year, and in it, it featured helps on how to teach Sunday school to adults, youth, and children. And, you know, they all wanted to know a little bit about adults, but the other was, you know, it was just chipping away, I'm going to tell you that. And we came up with a basic curriculum for working with children and a picture roll. And they loved the simple pictures, but it was still, they were taking them home and putting them on their walls for the pastor and his wife. <laughs> Reality, huh? So then when it seemed that there was nothing else to do, I felt like after nearly a decade, 
of trying to really advance ministry to children. There was a few successes, but then two things happened that God did, and he had to one, one that stepped in. First, a young man who had been at part of my very first Sunday school teacher's training and had never taught or anything, but he was there. He had, then had gone on to Bible school, and he planted a new church, and he believed that I was telling the truth. And so he began to make space for children's ministry, and in fact, he became the very first pastor who ever hired someone to do children's ministry. And that was my first glimmer of hope. And then many miles away in the town of Moshi, God did the absolute miraculous. There was a pastor named Glorious Show, and now that's a man, Glorious Show. And he went outside his church, into, by close to the marketplace, and he was having like a little mini crusade for five days outside. And he told them, now Monday you come to the church at 4 o'clock, and I'll start teaching you the Bible, you know, teach discipleship, in other words. And at 4 o'clock, the only ones there were some children. But, you know, he kind of shooed them away, and he waited, and he figured, oh, well, they, some of them were a little late from work and all that. And when it came to be 4.30 or so, I don't know exactly what time, he, anyway, he decided that he was just going to close up the church and go home because nobody had come. And as he's trying to get the children away, the Holy Spirit spoke to him, and in a quieter voice said, teach the children. And Glorious ignored it because he didn't want to teach children. And as he was then ready to lock the door, the Holy Spirit had to hammer away at him, teach the children. And with absolutely no heart for it, he said, okay, come back in. Come down here and just sit here. And, you know, only in Tanzania is the first lesson on discipleship, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> only there. Amen. So he opened it and he taught them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when he closed his Bible, because he had obeyed the Holy Spirit, not saying very willingly or very cheerfully, there were 35 children. Every one of those children was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Raised Praise their hands. Praise, Praise God. The Lord. In other tongues. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the Lord made sure that they stayed doing that until, you know, it gets dark early there in Africa. So it's dark by between 6.30 and 7 o'clock. It's dark. And so the parents are coming to find their children. And he wanted to have, he had someone go get all the deacons so that they could see. And he said, this means that children, they can accept the Lord. They, they can love the Lord. They can be saved. You know, you know it's kind of like, Mama Meckle's right. <laughs> Nobody had believed me very much yet. And so Tanzania would never be the same. Now, it is the number one country in the entire continent of Africa for children's ministry with the Assemblies of God. And part of that is we returned to the United States and I began to work with the Faith in Action series, which is to build up pastors and the local churches. And we developed this book, Children's Ministry. You can see it's a fat book. We call it the A to Z. It's got everything that's ever needed. I'm not everything, but you know what I'm saying. All the basics, all the basics for having children's ministry. So for Tanzania, we then wrote it in English and had it translated into Swahili. And we began printing an Iowa project. And we began printing for Tanzania. And we did 5,000 copies, one for every church. And we also facilitated the training so that a pastor and potential children's ministry workers would then be trained how to do this. And from that, they are, have gone so far that they believe by the year 2020, they will have 4 million children that are taught every week by the Tanzania Assemblies of God. They will be teaching them in two formats. One will be in the local church via Sunday school and children's ministry. And they are working very hard because Tanzania has released time that every elementary, which they call a primary school in Tanzania, will have an Assemblies of God person who teaches that one hour of release time per week. Is that incredible? Everyone is trained with that book to be a release time teacher. That's what your funds and your giving help to do. And so we are just so thankful that we also um, have now added the printing equipment into Tanzania so that they can now print everything right on location, no shipping in or anything like that. 
We have done this just with this book, Children's Ministry, for several countries, and now we are just coming to the end of the Kenya project. Kenya is the next country north of Tanzania. It's near completion, and they already have 4,000 books they've done. The last 1,000 books will be arriving because they're printing in country um, within about three more weeks. And uh, we started last year in October, so we've gone about 13 months on the project. They can, the testimonies are so incredible that children's ministry has approximately tripled in the last year. Is that incredible? And this is what happens. If we just work together with the blessing of God, it is possible to change whole nations on their value of children in the kingdom of God. And this is what we're seeing as we go country by country. There was another need and another dream, and that was helping families with biblical and practical helps in order to do a better job of raising their children. I developed the very first book ever written in Swahili by anybody in Tanzania, and you see how small it is? But it really was very important way back in the early 1990s when I did this. I can't tell you what a change this did, and it's just a little itty bitty thing. But then we decided with the Faith in Action series, we wanted to do better. And so now we have marriage and family. It's also we call our A to Z book, much bigger. All the basics, everything that's necessary, we say for the church to help families. Because this is where the church would train parenting skills, family skills. This is very church oriented so that leaders in the church, the pastors in that would be teaching. And so we, we, we've targeted every single pastor and spouse in Tanzania for their sake and helping them how they use this book for their congregation. We've also translated into 15 other languages and saturated several countries already with a book for every pastor with at least three days of training. There are hundreds of stories from China and Cuba and Haiti and Madagascar, Botswana, Romania, and many other places. You see, God so desires that families receive his love and guidance, that he is performing miracles, underscore miracles, to get this resource into places that seem impossible to us. One of them is in the hands of every social worker in communist China. It is mission possible with the Lord. Because I don't just do books for Africa. That's my heart throb. But our largest users is still Spanish because it's such a large block all through Latin America. And we have 900 and some Bible schools that use our resources. Other places, it's in different settings and all that. So you're going to be getting a brochure and a prayer card after a while. Please open up and look in the center. And you can read a lot about the Faith in Action series. The books are on the back of the table in the foyer there. And stop by, and we can talk about it. And you can take some home. They're for sale. I don't want to take them home. <laughs> but there's one more part to the story, and I want you to listen up. The young man who attended that first Sunday school teacher's training, his name is Barnabas Mtokambali. He is now Dr. Mtokambali. He lived with us in Springfield and got his doctorate from AGTS, somebody's got theological seminary. He is now the general superintendent of the Tanzania Assemblies of God. And the most important thing he did when he became general superintendent was to work to have trained children's ministry workers in every church in Tanzania, and that is why they are number one in the, country, in the continent of Africa. And who was the main teacher and trainer of children's ministry workers? Or should I say is, was, is, whatever you want to say? Well, his name is Glorious Show. Because he left being a pastor, and he built the very first school to train children's ministry workers, and that is what he does as a ministry. And he will train Lutherans or Baptists or anybody else. And so when I said it's the number one in the Assemblies of God, it's the number one Protestant outreach to children is in Tanzania because of Barnabas and glorious show. Is that not incredible? Is there a mission possible? Yes. yes. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Trudy. Now we have been educated. Amen? 
And we have been edified to the glory of God. Praise his holy name. God is doing great things all of the time. Amen. Amen, amen. It is mission possible. It is mission possible for Africa. I am so excited. One of the very first churches I've ever come to. And you had a map of Africa. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We have been here before, and some of you may remember this, but I want to give you something that you can take home with you. And I want you to know that we have Africa in our heart because God placed it there. As a very young man, when I knew God was speaking to me, I told God three things. I told him ever with an N on the front of it. Some of you will put that together. I told God I wouldn't ever marry an only child. I had a bad experience with one in grade school. Stabbed me in the back with a pencil. I wouldn't ever live on the west coast. <laughs> I said, yeah, I said I wouldn't live in, west, in California. That's what I mean by west coast. Uh, Where did we begin our ministry? California. <laughs> with Teen Challenge. And I told God I would never go to Africa. And that's just what God did. <laughs> God has a great sense of humor. So if you think you're brave enough, go ahead. Tell God what you won't do. God believes in mission possible. Amen. There's a song I learned as a young person. And uh, several years ago, so this will date me as well, but you know the song, Nothing is Impossible? When you put your trust in God, nothing is impossible. When you're leaning and walking with God, all things are possible with Him. Amen. So, three guesses, first four don't count. How many brothers and sisters Trudy has? I already told you where we began our first ministry. And now you know where our hearts are in Africa. Love the Tanzanians. We served for 10 years in Tanzania and now we serve the continent of Africa. Africa is a huge place. So if you'd please join with me and raise your left hand and say praise the Lord. Thank you Jesus for Africa. May Africa be saved. Amen. Now bend your hand over at the wrist. And point it at me, keep your thumb out. You see, I'm going to look at your map, you're going to look at my map. Uh-huh. You see your map of Africa? This is West Africa. Your thumbs, your knuckles represent the equator. Down here is South Africa. Well, Tanzania was in East Africa, just south of the equator. That puts it between this knuckle and this knuckle on your little finger. So you can go ahead and pinch that little finger right there. Oh, not too hard, that's Tanzania. Tanzania is the size of Texas and Oklahoma put together. The continent of Africa, you can pull all of the continental United States. You can then add all of India. Then you can add all of China. And then in the spaces left over, you can add all of Europe. And God loves everyone. The Americans, the Europeans, and the Africans. Jesus said, I will build my church. And he is keeping his promise. Amen. Take your Bibles, if you would please, with me and turn with me to the book of Matthew. I do want to get praise and glory to God. If some of you have seen us before and known us, you've known me with glasses. Well, I have to add these little readers. I want to thank you for your prayers in this past year. It's one of, been one of the toughest years that I've had, not in physical strength, but in December of 2014, I went virtually blind in the right eye. Had a hole in the macula and couldn't figure out why I couldn't see. It's like putting your finger right in front of your eye and then trying to see with it. I had peripheral, but no vision. Went to the eye doctor and he found the hole in the macula. Had to have surgery. January 5th, had surgery. 
It's the surgery where you have to spend eight and a half to ten days face down, face parallel to the floor, because they use a gas bubble to hold that that surgery in place. If you lay on your back, it floats off, your healing is, is gone, then you're blind. So needless to say, I did the eight and a half days. Um, all day long, 45 minutes after, out of an hour, all night. And uh, But thank God that he is our healer. Amen? Amen. Amen. That surgery does create problems with your cataracts. No, I said Cadillac. He said, no, cataracts. I said, well, I don't have cats either. No. <laughs> so I had cataract surgery. And then I went back to, to check up on that in, in the end of, in April. And my eyesight was as bad as it was in December. I, they gave me the reading chart. I couldn't read the second line down. Ooh, doctor surgeon didn't like that very well. Gave me the reading test. I didn't, sent me to the. It's an eye MRI. It's a. They video you. They not video. They they, yeah. They they do your eyes and and see what's wrong. And the doctor came into the little room and he said, "I don't know how to tell you this." I says, "Well, I guess you just tell me in English. I know Swahili." He didn't, so he decided to tell me in English. He said, you have a hole in the left eye in the macula. The nurse, the assistant said, wow. He said, yeah, only 7% chance of that. So, we'll have to schedule surgery. End of April, back surgery for the left eye. Back to the, it's great for your prayer life though. <laughs> Went through the cataract surgery, just had my eye exam follow up from that last week. And I can now pass my driver's test and without, do not need glasses to drive. God is good. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen. But this little print up here gets a little small, so I have to have some readers. So Matthew, Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. Matthew 19, 26. Sorry about that. Would you stand with me as we read God's word, please? But Jesus looked at them... And said, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. The Amplified reads, but Jesus looked at them and said, with people, as far as it depends on them, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Um, I want to read it from the message. It, it brings some clarity, even though it's not my choice theological <laughs> Bible to read. <laughs> but it does bring some clarity here, so let me read it from the message. Jesus looked hard at them and said, No chance at all if you think that you can pull it off yourself. But every chance in the world if you trust God to do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Wow, how great it is. How great it has been. How great it is. And how great things you are doing because of your word and keeping your promises. Bless now as we partake together of your word and your spirit and what you're doing in Africa. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. This is a story, if you look just a few verses ahead, is about the rich man who, who, said, who came to Christ and said to him, 
Teacher, good teacher, what must I do to be have to have eternal life? And Jesus told him that you should take all of the all that you have. Well, first he gave him the the commandments to love the Lord your God and and to love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, well, these things uh, these things I have attempted and I have tried to do to the best of my ability. And 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 what else? He says. Then Jesus said, well, then go take everything that you have and sell it and give it to the poor. Whoa, he said, that was, that was a hard thing. And when the disciples heard him say this, they were greatly astonished, and they said, who, who then can be saved? And this was Jesus' response that we read uh, together this morning. And Jesus looked at them and said, with man, that's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I could say that the theme of Trudy sharing today is that not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Amen. And we have been commissioned, as I said, as missionaries to go and to share the good news in Africa. And we have absolutely fallen in love with that commission and with that responsibility. In this passage of Scripture, it is possible to be saved. Amen. Amen. Are you saved? Amen. Have you trusted in Jesus Christ? Your salvation comes only through trusting in Him. It is nothing that we are, can do of ourselves, but it's only by trusting in Him. It is not of good works. Thank God that both of us were called and saved as children. And that's why we believe so strongly in children. When we arrived in Tanzania, we discovered that they didn't believe that children could be saved. We, wow, we were in Swahili is the word for it. We were in Changa. We were, we, we were in awe. We were surprised. We were, we were whoa, now what are we going to do? But Trudy stood up to the task and began to teach. And God called the right people, as you have already heard. Amen. He does what we think is impossible. Improbable is a better word. But it is possible with him. Received the baptism of the Holy Spirit as a teenager through the local church. Grew up in this section, section four. I can remember coming to Shenandoah as a teenager uh, uh, with, for CA rallies. I can remember coming as fellowship meetings. They used to have them uh, way back then. <laughs> uh, but that was just one of the things that, that they did. And that's, that's some of my memory. I grew up in Gray, Iowa. How many of you know where Gray is? Hey, one does. For those of you who don't know where Gray is, it's halfway between black and white. <laughs> Went to the Audubon High School, but it was a little country church in a small, small little town of less than 100 people. And they always said if they counted the cats and dogs, people, cats, and anyway. Uh, but thank God for that little country church. Over 20 plus people are in full-time ministry. Some of them have gone to glory, uh, but they came out of that church. Uh, a couple of names you may have heard of was the Winnig boys, Robert Winnig and Norman Winnig, uh, right out of that church. Uh, so we thank God for what he, what he has done and what for, for what he is doing. Then Jesus called us into the ministry. I've told you what I thought of that call and my response. But thank God he didn't accept my response. Amen. He continued to love me, he continued to lead me, he continued to call, to guide and direct. And taught me as my parents had taught us children, it, obedience is better than sacrifice. I have two brothers, they each have two brothers, we each have five sisters. Please add, don't multiply. That is eight. All eight of those children serve Jesus Christ today. All eight of those children married Christian mates. Amen. Amen. We had a family reunion last August 
in Colorado and there were only 88 out of 107 of us there. To the glory of God. Amen. So parents, bring your children to church. Teach your children the word of God at home. Live the Christ-like example. Amen. Then their hearts can be open to hear the voice of God when he calls and when he speaks. And that's exactly my life testimony for that. So God called us to Africa. We went to Africa and Trudy gave you the story about the children. So I was involved in working with the adults and, and with the pastors and doing pastor seminars and teaching and training. And while home for a medical surgery in 1985, driving up Dear Sweet Highway 71. Someday you'll learn where Highway 71 is. A little sarcasm there too, huh? <laughs> anyway, you go up 71 to Storm Lake. If you've driven up there in the years past, there used to be a big curve on that road. On the right side, on the east side of that road is a little factory still there. The curve is gone, but the little factory is still there. One night driving home from somewhere way in South Iowa, I was, we were driving back to Sheldon, and God gave me a vision of a tabernacle. I whipped off the road into their gravel driveway. Trudy sleeping, the kids sleeping. It woke them with a startle. They woke up screaming. Our youngest one of two daughters uh, has that scream that just, well, maybe that's when my hair started going. <laughs> and, but the shorter story is I saw a tabernacle. We drove home. I did not fall asleep. She thought I did. I did not. We drove home. I shared it with her parents. Trudy was still not a firm believer in it. And her dad, when we went out after breakfast to go to his shop, and I thought to help him do some more plants work or, or whatever, odd man jobs, and, and he said, uh, you know, we could, uh, we could be in Storm Lake by coffee time. He loves his coffee. Storm Lake for coffee? You're going to drive an hour and a half for coffee? He said, come on, get in, let's go. And we drove back to that little factory. We drove in that gravel driveway, and there is a horse corral made out of two inch by two inch square tubing. Yeah, in the daylight it looked like a horse corral. But I know, I know that I know what I saw. I saw a two-inch frame with a pitched roof, and it was a tabernacle. Because I knew, and God knew, that Tanzania needed churches. People worshiping out in the bush, people worshiping out in the open, they needed a place to worship under. And Dad, we went to coffee, we, he sketched out on a napkin, and he says, you know, I, I believe that that's possible. Man, I, I could have hugged that man. Woo! <laughs> because he trusted in God. Because he could build faith in me. We designed a little tabernacle out of two inch square tube. 20 feet by 40 feet. A farmer helped us build four of them. We shipped them to Tanzania when I went back. The missionaries saw it there and they demanded that they had to have some. I called back home to dad. He had that same farmer and they built 10 more. 14 more was, were sent to Tanzania to begin. If you read in the history of Africa, tabernacle evangelism was re represented by the little tabernacle out there. And if I could have Jack and the pastor please come and join me. We want to raise for you a truss. Now this truss is simply an example. It's another illustration. The map... Hand map was given to you because it's always handy. But this illustration is given to you that you also may see and, and put something in your mind and your brain that this trust is to speak to us about trusting not in ourselves, not in our ability, but in God. Amen. Amen. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. You can see the fittings. This one's aluminum. It is smaller than the last one I had here. 
three and a half, four years ago, because uh, it was steel, but I have a smaller vehicle. And I'm not quite as strong as I was back then. No. <laughs> so I carry this little lightweight model. No, we don't build them out of aluminum. We build them out of the red steel. The legs are 12 feet high. The span is 35 and a half feet wide from foot to foot, or leg to leg. And, and they are 46 feet long. So the roof is 36 feet wide and 46 feet long. Now you saw them lift that up. Thank you, gentlemen. Give them a hand, would you? Thank you. You saw them lift that up with a, a kneeling foot. Invented by a businessman who went to Tanzania to help build tabernacles. And said there's got to be a better way than using ropes. And speaking to teams who have a rope for pulling it up and a rope to keep it from going too far. So you have four ropes, two ropes, one on each end. And now you're speaking another, another language in Burkina Faso when I was building the, the Bible school there for dormitories. I had to work through four languages. So if you're pulling these ropes, how are you going to tell them, pull that one just a little harder? No, don't pull that one so hard. No, this one. And you've got a trust that's, that's twisted in ways that you didn't think they could go. And then you have a team when the trust gets twisted and it looks like it's going to fall on them. Uh, they weren't fully committed to that rope, so they left it. <laughs> <laughs> and the beauty of this invention is you saw two men lifted this one but six men can lift a 12 foot uh, 15 foot tall truss and, and just stand it right up and it's put into place by the impact tools and the little one and a quarter inch screws that are used I love the idea of the little small screws because God can use even the little things amen it was said of little Kenny Meckle growing up in the schools, he won't amount to nothing. Dad was 6'2", my brother was 6'2", got another brother that was 6'4", he had an accident and fell off a bridge, and now he's, now he's 7 feet tall, no, he's in a wheelchair. But his mind, his heart, and his attitude is taller. So here I was, a freshman in high school, I was 4 foot, 8 inches tall. I weighed 75 pounds. I wore size 5 shoes. Size 5 because my feet were size 3. And I was sick and tired of the humiliation of being humiliated with having no foundation to stand on. And I stuttered. Sent to speech class. So they said of little teeny meckle, he won't make it, he won't amount to nothing. And they're right, except they didn't know the God equation. Amen! Amen and amen! And now, and now here I am. Been in Africa, been all over all Africa, I've helped do the fire Bible in Africa in nine different countries of Africa, doing the fire Bible with nine fire Bible languages. Been to China, been to Europe. <laughs> that little runt. Some of you are farmers, you know what that means. Yeah, that's what I was called. You see, it's possible when you trust in God. Thank God for country pastors who preached the word and who shared even with those who people thought never could do it. But God can do great things with small things. Just give him your life. And I am so glad I did. I want to take you back to Tanzania. My time is gone. Back to this Barnabas and Tokumbali. His vision in Tanzania is to plant 10,000 churches in 10 years. Thank God he doesn't, believe in the, he doesn't believe that it's impossible. He believes in the possible. In the last five years they've planted 5,000 churches. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. It is possible. It is possible. Hallelujah. And now God is even multiplying our ministry. He's added another publish for all or print on demand uh, possibility that I'm participating in with Africa's Hope. And we're printing books for Africa. Over 300 Bible schools in Africa. 
and the students can't take the textbooks home. How'd you like to be a pastor with no books? We need your help. The tabernacle is $7,500. Burundi has just contacted us and is crying, is crying. Would you please help us? $25,000 is needed to put the roof on over 100 brand new church plants in Burundi. Is it possible? It is possible with God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I want to remind you as well today that as God leads your heart to give to the Meckles, you can... Uh, Make sure you specify that on missions. So if part of your missions giving is for your monthly pledge, and then you want to give specifically to them today, please make sure that you do that. You can find one of the ushers, and we could get that to them today. Uh, you know, I got to give you a huge thanks for, I, I think you really spoke to where we're at today about this mission being possible. And Matthew 19.26 is... An absolutely timely scripture, I think, for you guys and for us. Did you guys hear that mission of 10,000? 10,000 churches. You heard how large Africa is. <clears throat> There's brothers and sisters in the Lord that are yet to be reached. I want you to think that every time you pray and every time you give, you're helping the heartbeat of God reach a place in the world for Him and with Him. You're actually helping to reach right here. And someday, when you get to heaven, God is going to show you what you did. But here's what I want you to get. <clears throat> tell me what TV show you watch. Tell me what Facebook sh thing you're reading. Tell me what vacation you go on. For most of us at your job, how does that change eternity? How does it get a soul to get out of hell for all of eternity. The testimony about those eight and a half days. Imagine that being for eternity. Eternity is forever. What are you doing? What am I doing? That's the heartbeat of Jesus. I want to tell you guys I'm so proud of this church. I'm so proud of you for making your pledges, for saying your prayers with these missionaries and for them, by doing what you can here. Stop getting in your head that missions is for someone else. It's for all of us. Not all of us are going to go to Africa. To praise God if we do. But we can go with them there. We can help make sure that they go there. We can help keep them there. But we're here. I should put a map up of Shenandoah right there, or whatever city you're in. Think of your neighborhood. Think about a few weeks ago when he says, what would your board look like? Wentling when he said that. Think about this, you guys. There is nothing more exciting in your life than this mission. Nothing. Nothing. They call Disneyland the most, you know what, happiest place on earth? I, I don't know about that. Because when I'm hearing stories about what we're doing, we're getting people out of hell. That's what this is about. This church, we're not about being a show. We're not about always saying, well, I'm dealing with this, so I need help with this, so I don't really, you know, the mission. This is it. 
It's not about you. The greatest thing we can do is when we make it about Jesus. Because you know what happens? All the things that the devil wants to distract us with to make it about us that weighs us down, it falls away. We realize that that wasn't so important. Now, there are some real things that we're going through here today. And that's why I want to take a moment right now. Some of you are walking in here with some real life issues happening. I want us to close our eyes right now. If you're here today and you say, you know what, Pastor Chuck? You know what, Meckles? I know Jesus has a heart for Africa, but I'm hearing today he has a heart for me. And I've never responded to that. Or maybe here today you walked away from that and you need to recommit your life. But if you say, I need Jesus to be my Lord and Savior here today. In fact, thank you to the Meckles from coming all the way from Africa to come back here that I heard this today. And I can't do this life myself anymore. I can't take care of eternity myself. It's impossible on my own. But with Jesus, it is possible. With all eyes closed here today, I want you to think about your eternity and how Jesus took care of it. And you never responded to him and said, I need that. I need Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Every eye closed. Just slip up your hand right now because I want to say a prayer for you wherever you're at. If that's you here today, amen. Amen. Any others today say, I need Jesus as my Savior. Amen. This is a safe place. Hands going up. Anyone else here today? Praise God. You can put your hands down. And those hands that went up, we're going to say a prayer with you. The Bible says, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. We're better together, so we're going to say that prayer together with you. Let's all pray this out loud. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, and I need a Savior, and you're the only one. And so I give you my life right now. I make you leader of my life and Savior of my soul. And even though I may not understand it all, I know that you will grow me and show me the rest of my life as I follow you. Thank you for what you've done, Jesus. In your name. You can open your eyes.